Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. Uh, with me today is Daniel McAdams. Daniel, good to see you today. Good morning, Dr. Paul. Good. Uh, we noticed today that our former colleague, uh, Paul Martin, had an article on his website that got republished on the Mises Institute and on Zero Hedge, and it has to do with the Fed announcement today. And uh, he was postulating, what's the Fed going to tell us today? And he goes through throw this thing, but it's an interesting subject, and by the time a lot of people uh, tune our program in, although we have live uh, viewers right now, uh, we will know what the Fed has done. So, But at least he called our attention to it. And I found the fascinating thrust of his uh, article was, if we in our central bank do this in our planning, how does it affect the rest of the world? So yeah. it's, we don't live in a closed world. And he talks about what the Bank of England will do, what the Bank of Japan will do, and what the uh, ECU will do. And that's all this management stuff. I hope you keep up with all this because it's so confusing because if you're a hedge fund manager, I guess you got to know all this stuff. <laughs> but uh, it, it, uh, it, to me, it just dem demonstrates what interventionism is all about. Uh, I complain the Fed. Fed doesn't know what they're doing. I was asked today earlier, you know, what should the Fed do? And mm -hmm. the, the Trump uh, is going to append, appoint two new members and they're, they're going to have control and, they, and which way will they move? Maybe they'll move in your direction. and. Really, you can't patch up a central bank who's involved in central economic planning. It, it just doesn't work. Uh, a good free market economy um, doesn't need a central bank. And of course, that's the reason we're suffering the consequences. And we already see what's happening in our economy. People aren't all that happy. And uh, I think a lot of people think we're on the verge of a recession. Yeah, Paul Martin Foss writes in the Carl Menger Center, that, you know, his, I think his early thrust is absent how it affects the other markets. If you just look at the U.S. market, uh, he says this decision can't be based on uh, any strong economic data because nothing has really changed. On the contrary, maybe. Uh, any sudden improvement in the labor market? No. So, so on what basis are they making this change now as opposed to last time they met? And the markets have known that uh, the likelihood of a, of a token little increase in, in uh, interest rates would occur. And uh, interest rates have gone up as a reflection of that anticipation. But the stocks have skyrocketed. And usually, you know, for years now, it's been the opposite. Oh, if the Fed starts to tighten and then interest rates go up, you know, there's problems and, and the stocks would go down. So it's interesting to see that that, that didn't happen. Today, though, it might be after the fact. Uh, it's been rising for so long. Maybe once this announcement may Maybe you'll see a real downturn. It went down a little bit uh, this morning. But the other interesting thing in the markets in this anticipation is, generally speaking, if uh, one uh, one country or one central bank leads the way and starts to raise interest rates, they get a little boost in their currency. And the dollar's been very, very strong, abnormally so, mm -hmm. but, but it's been very, very strong. But uh, now with this, uh, you know, an announcement that's coming, uh, I would have thought, well, maybe the dollar will take a little blip upward, but it, it took a blip downward. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's why, um, you know, predicting these markets anticipation is completely wrong because uh, you can't know what people will do because in spite of all the regulations, there's still, uh, still a lot of individuals, there are started a lot of businesses, a lot of banks, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, opinions being put into the market. And uh, so uh, th that's why economic planning fails because you can't anticipate uh, economic planning in the extreme is socialism and, and communism and those systems always fall apart. But uh, why I'm concerned about this is that uh, Mises, uh, who uh, was rather astute in uh, economics, he said, well, interventionism ends too. And uh, that certainly is what we have noticed here, uh, especially since the year 2000. I think failure of the central bank, you know, whether it's the NASDAQ bubble, the housing bubble, whether it's the failed bailout with uh, $4 trillion and all these things. And then the pretense right now is things are doing better and that's why they can raise interest rates, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and, and that doesn't work. But I do want to put up a chart uh, to show uh, what what prices are doing. Today, a report came out that uh, producer prices, uh, it was anticipated that the producer prices uh, would rise, um, you know, minimally, but they rose 0.4%, which is significant. So this chart is, is, to me, pretty dramatic about the anticipation of 
price inflation. We have the monetary inflation. The money's out there. The Fed's done that. Now, wh where is it going? Uh, it's going in the stock market, certainly. It's been in the bond market, but bond prices are down. But this one measures uh, the core PPI, year over year uh, rate of increases. At the peak bottom there, which is like approximately the beginning of this year, uh, since that whole year of 16, the, the PPI has been in, you know, increasing. And I think that's probably what's going to happen in the future. And can you explain what that means to those of us who are not? Well, uh, uh, usually if PPI you look at is, uh, yeah, a producer price index, okay. and that is not the consumer price index. But if the producer's prices are going up, uh, it's estimated that, uh, you know, six, eight, ten months, depending on what product and what's happening, it will be translated into price increases too. But there are still a lot of price increases going on already. You know, people say, well, the Fed says it's less than 2% and there isn't any. <clears throat> well, why, uh, why are they uh, need an a, uh, increase in the minimum wage? Well, it's because the minimum wage is small because of they lost purchasing power and they're trying to catch up. So everybody's short of money and purchasing power, and that means there's a lot of inflation that they won't admit to. In that whole year, you see the prices going up. That, that looks pretty dramatic. Yeah, and, and uh, the big thing is that percentage-wise, it, uh, it, it isn't grabbing a lot of attention yet. But if the trend is, is true, then you're going to hear a lot more about it. But you were saying at the same time that sales are down. Is that... <clears throat> Yeah, the, uh, the, the retail sales, uh, you know, didn't go up like they were supposed to. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, the sales down and prices up, it's, it seems like it should be the, the opposite, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, that, <coughs> that is the case, that uh, they should. Uh... But we have, um, <coughs> I think we have another chart on employment, you know, and this is, this is a key issue that's been, uh, that's been put up, you know, has... <coughs> Has employment improved? Has there been an increase in employment to justify a, uh, an increase in rates? And if we can put up the employment chart, we can see there are some discrepancies between what the feds are using to measure employment and between what our friends at Shadow Stats, for example, use. Uh, John Williams at Shadow Stats, uh, which I think you've gone by for years as a more reliable source. Uh, look at that huge discrepancy. Well, this, this is uh, very important because the blue line at the top is uh, produced by Shadow Stats, the uh, private organization, uh, John Williams. And he's saying that uh, unemployment is over 20%. That's pretty incredible. Maybe that's, maybe that's why people are unhappy. Uh, yeah. But people, uh, people, and then the statistics are, are false as well because uh, they might say, well, a lot of new jobs. Minimum wage jobs, very low paying jobs, or people taking two jobs. Uh, the, other the other number that they have to look at is the uh, uh, labor participation rate, uh, which, which keeps going down. There's less people uh, involved, 95 million people aren't looking for jobs anymore. And I think that explains why um, people are more unhappy than the government charts show because things are much worse. Prices are going up uh, more than they thought. And uh, you mentioned the fact about sales. Uh, sales didn't go up like everybody anticipated that November was a great sales month, but it was uh, 0.1 instead of 0.4. Mm. So, uh, and, and if that continues, that's, that's what they call stagflation. Uh -huh. And uh, we know a little bit about that from the 1970s. And stagflation is when the economy is weak, but prices go up. There's a, such a thing as known as a, uh, uh, a, a, an inflationary depression. Of course, just go to uh, Zimbabwe yeah. or Venezuela. Prices don't, just because it's a weak economy, that doesn't mean prices drop. This is one of the biggest fallacies of, <clears throat> of our economic planning is that, uh, <clears throat> is that if you have rising prices, you have a healthy economy. But if you have a healthy economy in capitalism, prices go down. Uh huh. Well, the you know the thing that, that I was thinking about when I looked at the chart that you you sent me earlier today by email, and I was reading a Wall Street Journal article talking about employment, and this may shock you, but there is a discrepancy between the two perspectives. But it made me wonder, you know, if if these great economic central planners are using statistics that are fundamentally false and inaccurate, then how can the outcome be anything other than bad? Here's what the Wall Street Journal said. It was talking about full employment uh, as a determinant of what the Fed may do with interest rates. And he said, 
Now, there's no real way to measure what full employment should be, so it's a little bit difficult. But he said if the, if the Fed judges that the economy has reached full employment, that could suggest a quicker pace of increases. But what if the stats they're using are the ones, the red ones that they use, instead of the ones that you think are more accurate? Well, that's why it's impossible. They, 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 they're going to make a mistake, and they shouldn't be in the business of this. And that's why I think uh, eventually people are going to catch on to this. Central banking has lost a lot of credibility, not only our Federal Reserve, which is the top dog, you know, in central planning and, and monetary manipulation because we have the reserve currency. But uh, it, it's fallible. It doesn't work. They can't know. Uh, sometimes they press me on my interviews. They say, well, tell us what the Fed should do today. Mm. Should they raise it or shouldn't they raise it? Well, they shouldn't do anything other than get out of the way, which is a major thing. How do you just remove it? But the market would say interest rates should be higher. There's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, I, I keep thinking about how is this going to fit in to the next administration, yeah. you know, uh, <clears throat> Uh, right now, I think uh, the next administration is going to need the Fed to try to hold things together. Even though the Fed has been a total failure, you know, uh, everybody concedes that interest rates have been too low for too long and that uh, when they decided to really inflate, it didn't do any good. Uh, but uh, we're embarking on huge deficits. The deficit seems to be the least concern of the people in Congress. It's always been that way in Congress. But now we have an administration coming in that they once in a while will mention, oh, this is horrible, $20 trillion national debt. But they've embarked on bigger spending. The, the, the concession is there, and Democrats really behind the scenes love it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to massively increase spending on infrastructure and massively increase spending on militarism. And uh, we're not going to become uh, non interventionists. The troops aren't coming home. Uh, they're going to have a different monster to go after. That's, that's about all. And they need, uh, you know, a lot of weapons. So that's a lot of spending. But that is spending taken out of the hands and the pockets and decision making of the individuals. And it's done, it's all malinvestment. Uh, but it's going to increase the debt. I hope we get tax reduction no matter what. Some people think only reduce taxes after you cut spending. No, cut taxes, uh, uh, you know, uh, immediately and cut the spending is what you, what you need to do. But if, if the political system, which I believe this is correct, is such where they won't cut spending, they might get a tax break and they're going to spend money on the wrong things, the deficit's going to go up. Interest rates are going to go up. And we mentioned this yesterday of how, how significant it is, you know, if you move a quarter, a point, $50 billion mm -hmm. more, what if it goes up one point, $200 billion more just in interest rates? This is, this is going to be horrendous. And uh, the, the, uh, the Fed uh, will not be ignored. Uh, if, if they do this spending and if we have the debt going up, uh, you know, they, even under Reagan, they did that. Reagan, uh, Reagan lowered taxes, uh, raised spending, and uh, the Fed came in. And after 82, uh, he, the Fed started inflating again. And, and you know, it, it has and will revive economy until it gets near the end stage. I think we've been at the end stage, uh, you know, since, in, since uh, year 2000. And we were moving, the significant event was 1971 when we had no restraints on the Fed because we de-linked de uh, de from, from gold. So this, uh, since that time, it has just been spending. I believe the pressure will be on. Presidents always have a very strong interest in the Federal Reserve because if they don't do something that seems to help temporarily for the next day, uh, or the next election, then they're told that, uh, you know, they, that they are, uh, you know, deliberately doing it. Well, they're deliberately not being able to do it because they don't know what to do. But the pressure will be on and the Fed will be there. There's no way if they spend this money and the deficits explode that the Fed's going to allow the market to take over and say, well, interest rates uh, are less than 1% and they're going to go to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, I mean, the whole thing would, would fall apart. So that what they have to do is try to balance this by uh, trying to save the economy or, or, or sacrifice the dollar. And what they'll do is they will print the monies. So the Fed, uh, uh, we know what the Fed will do, but because they're between the rock and the hard place uh, and it won't work, it hasn't been working, uh, that's why 
I, uh, I, I think that uh, the, the uh, evidence will keep growing that the Fed is dysfunctional, can't do it, and we ought to start seriously thinking about a new monetary system because uh, I, I, um, if this happens to the dollar, it, it really messes up you know, the whole world economy. And that's what uh, Paul Martin was making the point. This just isn't us. We're not in this. This is global. We have the global reserve currency. And what other central banks do is important. Maybe some will become more independent. Maybe there will be an advantage for even the people holding dollars to go to another currency. And uh, it's um, it's a mess. But the, to me, the fundamental flaw is the government's too big. They spend too much money and they don't care about deficits because on the short run, you run an economy by giving people what they want, whether it's in, in the military expenditures or the welfare expenditures. And the people are pacified. It's like a drug. It's like an addiction. And believe me, getting out of an addiction is not easy. And it's very similar in economics as it is with a person. And because people feel better if they feed their addiction. And right now, though, we're at a crossroads. Are they going to continue to feed the addiction with more spending uh, and, uh, and, and, and the addiction of, of new money? Of course, right now, there's a lot of positive feeling, and I think some of it is justified. Uh, Trump promises less taxes, less regulations, and maybe a new position on the Federal Reserve, and people are always hopeful. But when you look at these statistics of unemployment, they're, they're much worse. And uh, if you look at the prices, much worse than they will admit. Um, this is a different story. You know, industrial production is, is, is down. It's been down for 15 straight months. And, uh, and one, one of the big things are automobiles are way down on, uh, on, uh, on production. And uh, that'll creep off sporting goods, for instance. Now, maybe that's because that is sort of the extra spending. Maybe yeah. that's the first thing they cut back on. But uh, I, I, uh, I think that uh, I, I think we're in for tougher times. But uh, I just wish the euphoria would carry over so that we can doctor it up and work our way out of it. But that's the difficulty. That was, of course, my approach in the, uh, in the presidential campaign. There are ways you could work your way out of it, but politically, they don't allow us to do that. So what would happen if Trump had watched his show and he called you up and said, <laughs> Ron, I saw your show and I'm spooked. The numbers don't look good. What's the first thing I should do to get out of this? Well, mess? I would rest well and I wouldn't buy a plane ticket because <laughs> <laughs> somebody would be giving you fake news. <laughs> that, that, won't, that won't happen. Uh, but I always was very pleased and flattered when somebody seriously came and asked me a question. <laughs> and it has to be a serious question one-on-one -on -one and ask my opinion. And that would happen on rare occasions in the Congress. Mm -hmm. And I always uh, was very, uh, very thankful and, and flattered that somebody would ask. And uh, that would uh, uh, that would please me that I could discuss it. So anybody who's serious uh, would like my opinion, I'd probably refer them to somebody else that <laughs> could explain it better than I can. <laughs> but uh, I would certainly try to help because I think uh, politics uh, not the place where you usually have serious discussions. Yeah. Politics is sort of a bit of demagoguing. And demagoguing is turned into fake news. <laughs> and, and all that sort of thing. I do want to um, thank everybody for tuning in today, and uh, I hope you can return to the Liberty Report soon. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. Uh, with me today is Daniel McAdams. Daniel, good to see you today. Good morning, Dr. Paul. Good. Uh, we noticed today that our former colleague, uh, Paul Martin, 
had an article on his website that got republished on the Mises Institute and on Zero Hedge, and it has to do with the Fed announcement today. And uh, he was postulating, what's the Fed going to tell us today? And he goes through, through this thing, but it's an interesting subject. And by the time a lot of people uh, tune our program in, although we have live uh, viewers right now, uh, we will know what the Fed has done. So, but at least he called our attention to it. And I found the fascinating thrust of his uh, article was if we in our central bank do this in our planning, how does it affect the rest of the world? So yeah. it's, we don't live in a closed world. And he talks about what the Bank of England will do, what the Bank of Japan will do, and what the uh, ECU will do. And that's all this management stuff. I hope you keep up with all this because it's so confusing because if you're a hedge funds manager, I guess you got to know all this stuff. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it, to me, it just dem demonstrates what interventionism all about. Uh, I complain the Fed. Fed doesn't know what they're doing. I was asked today earlier, you know, what should the Fed do? And the, the Trump uh, is going to appoint, appoint two new members and they're, they're going to have control. And, they, and which way will they move? Maybe they'll move in your direction. And really you can't patch up a central bank who's involved in central economic planning it it just doesn't work uh, a good free market economy um, doesn't need a central bank and of course that's the reason we're suffering the consequences and we already see what's happening in our economy people aren't all that happy and uh, I think a lot of people think we're on the verge of a recession yeah Paul Martin Foss writes in the Carl Menger Center that, you know, his, I think his early thrust is absent how it affects the other markets. If you just look at the U.S. market, uh, he says this decision can't be based on uh, any strong economic data because nothing has really changed. On the contrary, maybe. Uh, any sudden improvement in the labor market? No. So, so on what basis are they making this change now as opposed to last time they met? And the markets have known that uh, the likelihood of a, of a token little increase in, in uh, interest rates would occur. And uh, interest rates have gone up as a reflection of that anticipation. But the stocks have skyrocketed. And usually, you know, for years now, it's been the opposite. Oh, if the Fed starts to tighten and then interest rates go up, you know, there's problems and, and the stocks would go down. So it's interesting to see that that, that didn't happen. Today, though, it might be after the fact. Uh, it's been rising for so long. Maybe once this announcement, maybe. Maybe you'll see a real downturn. It went down a little bit uh, this morning. But the other interesting thing in the markets in this anticipation is, generally speaking, if uh, one uh, one country or one central bank leads the way and starts to raise interest rates, they get a little boost in their currency. And the dollar's been very, very strong, abnormally so, mm -hmm. but, but it's been very, very strong. But uh, now with this uh, you know, an announcement that's coming, uh, I would have thought, well, maybe the dollar will take a little blip upward, but it, t it took a blip downward. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's why, um, you know, predicting these markets anticipation is completely wrong because uh, you can't know what people will do because in spite of all the regulations, there's still, uh, still a lot of individuals, there's still a lot of businesses, a lot of banks, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, opinions being put into the market. And uh, so uh, th that's why economic planning fails because you can't anticipate uh, economic planning in the extreme is socialism and, and communism and those systems always fall apart. But uh, why I'm concerned about this is that uh, Mises, uh, who uh, was rather astute in uh, economics, he said, well, interventionism ends too. And uh, that certainly is what we have noticed here, uh, especially since the year 2000. I think failure of the central bank, you know, whether it's the NASDAQ bubble, the housing bubble, whether it's the failed bailout with uh, $4 trillion and all these things. And then the pretense right now is things are doing better and that's why they can raise interest rates, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and, and that doesn't work. But I do want to put up a chart uh, to show uh, what what prices are doing. Today, a report came out that uh, producer prices, uh, it was anticipated that the producer prices uh, would rise, um, you know, minimally, but they rose 0.4%, which is significant. So this chart is, is, to me, pretty dramatic about the anticipation of 
price inflation. We have the monetary inflation. The money's out there. The Fed's done that. Now, where, where is it going? Uh, it's going in the stock market, certainly. It's been in the bond market, but bond prices are down. But this one measures uh, the core PPI, year-over-year year, uh, rate of increases. At the peak bottom there, which is like approximately the beginning of this year, uh, since that whole year of 16, the, the PPI has been in, you know, increasing. And I think that's probably what's going to happen in the future. And can you explain what that means to those of us 